I have any other announcements. So without further ado, I want to introduce Brent Dickinson over there. He's our artist of the night. Uh, he's a multidisciplinary conceptual artist and writer based in LA. He has presented exhibitions, performances, and screenings of his work around the US, Canada, and Europe, including the Essel Museum in Vienna, the Socrates Sculpture Park, and the Cornerstone Music Festival in Chicago. His work utilizes a radical entanglement of Christian theology, critical theory, and experimental comedy to explore, explore properties and structures of meaning formation. Dickinson is an associate professor of art at Institute of Pacific and recently completed a four, short film titled Transfiguration on Fourth River Mountain. So we're really happy to have him here. He taught me in New York. I, I learned, I studied with him in New York, and we're happy to have him here. We'll I don't know if we need to. Yeah, OK. People seem to drive. That's true. Hi, everyone. Um, so um, so I, I, I want to thank Emma for, for organizing this. It, it seems like she's brought a lot to your campus. I'm really proud of her as a former student of mine and as a friend of mine. Um, she's doing really good work. She's really great to work with. And um, thanks, Emma. So a, couple, a few of you guys were here on Tuesday night where I gave a presentation. Um, um, and it was, it, was, it was performative in nature. And that's become a practice of mine um, that I want to I I talk just a little bit about. So I want to talk a little bit about <laughs> my practice, a little bit of where it's come from, a little bit of where it is now talk about the show that's up currently, orient you to it, and then talk about whatever else we want to talk about. That's the, so that's a rough outline of where we're going to go tonight. Um, I, I'd actually, I, I decided I wanted to not show you anything tonight. I mean, so like oftentimes these, these, these lectures um, are kind of heavy on biography, um, bring you through like, where I started when I was 18 years old, the kind of work I was making, and then lead you all the way up to the show tonight. Um, however, one of the things that I'm, I'm chiefly interested in in my work is, is, is hermeneutics, is, is, the, is the process of interpreting work. Um, the, um, Dave Hickey, um, the, the, art, the art writer, um, said, said a thing that I've, I, has been really instrumental to the way that I, I think about I think about art. I, I, it's what I talk to my students about. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a really fundamental way that I think about the role that art plays um, in, in, in life, right? Um, uh, and, and that's this. This is what Dave Hickey said. He said, art brings us together and, he's, and it sorts us out. Art gives us something, uh, it, it is an occasion that gathers us together. Here we are here together tonight. And it sorts us out. We, we bring to an art object all the things, all of our desires, all the things that we want out of that thing. And either that thing satisfies some or all of those things, or it doesn't. But, but, but each of you guys bring a certain thing to, to an art object, right? You, you step up to the plate in front, of the, in front of an art object, right? And it's speaking to you and you're speaking to it. But the best situation is when there's somebody else standing next to you and they bring all of their things to, to, this, posi to this position, to this three-way conversation, right? And, and so, but that person has different needs, desires, et cetera, that it requires of this art object to either satisfy them or not satisfy them. And so then you, want, you guys wind up talking about, you and this fake person here to my right, um, we wind up talking about this artwork, but we do so through the lens of, of us, in a sense, like our desires, our interests, the things that, that, that might bring satisfaction to us if this artwork only did that, right? But the person next to me, it might completely do the things that they really want this artwork to do, right? So art brings us together. It brings me and, this, and my, my friend here 
together. And it sorts us out. It makes us, it, we, we have a way of talking about the things that really are important to us, but rather than doing it in a, in a, um, in a binary way where we're, where we're standing face to face, kind of duking it out, we stand shoulder to shoulder talking about this, this, uh, this correlative, this external correlative in front of us, this thing that we can project our interests, our desires, et cetera, onto, right? Um, but the artwork, in best case scenario, is the artwork is not inert. It's not just on the receiving end of our projections, but rather it's projecting onto us, right? And so it's this very generative, in the best case scenario, it's this very generative, very social engagement where, where two people and an object, so let's, say, let's call that three objects, are in a, in a dialogue. In a in a um, in a in a three-way conversation about whatever about life about politics about about beauty yeah um, so I I'm I'm interested so so when an when an artist comes to campus like this is present in the midst of that engagement there is a there is a a there's a, um, uh, the, the artist exerts, to my mind, the artist exerts too strong a force to allow those kinds of conversations to happen, right? Because I have a certain level of authority to say what these objects are about in there, right? Which, is a, which then serves in some ways a, um, a disservice to the social and socializing potential of encounter that's possible in a gallery. So, so in one sense, I'd rather, I'd rather in, in all cases, I'd rather do less talking and more listening or, or just not be present at all when it, when it comes to these kinds of engagements. Um, when I do do talks, and when I did a talk on Tuesday night, I did it in a, in a, in a performative way where I played a particular part talking about an organization that I, that I, that I launched in 2017. Um, and, and it is a piece, right? Like when I give these talks, um, there is there is art present in that there is there is fiction that unfolds. There is social engagement. The the students who are who are here in the seats that you guys are sitting in um, asked me good questions and they pushed back and they were trying to trying to figure out where where fiction ends and reality begins and maybe as they as they try to part the curtain they realize that 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 those those two things fiction and reality are often not not nearly as cleanly divided as one might think right um and so so uh so tuesday night was super cool wish you guys all could have been here um but um i so I don't want to assert too much of my biography and my history onto the show, um, but I'm happy to talk about it um, as you guys have questions, questions for me. Um, the show that you guys just saw, most of you probably, probably saw it, and is it still, will it be open after this, this time? So you can go back to it and, and, and see it, maybe with a little bit fresher eyes after we, we have do a little bit of contextualizing and framing um, here in our conversation. But I'd love for this to be as, as two-way or as 50 to one two-way as, um, as, as we can do it, because that just seems, that seems better than me sitting here talking. Um, so um, so the, the show, the show uh, in the gallery 
is representative of, of a way that I've been working for, for a while now, which is, which is decidedly decentralized uh, in a disciplinary sense. Um, uh, there's a little bit of everything <laughs> over there. Um, so there's some, there's some moving parts that aren't moving so well right now, but maybe we'll get them moving again in, in, a, in a short time. Um, there's some moving images. There's uh, some painting on the wall. There's some sculpture. There's some sound. There's wine. At least there was wine um, a short time ago. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff over there. Um, but what, what organizes all of that stuff um, are concepts and language, I guess. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in language, the way that, that, that we um, that, that we, we move through life making sense of it linguistically, largely. Um, and though there's physical properties to the work that's in the gallery, um, th the physicality of, of those objects are suspect a little bit, right? There's a, there's a lot of fake synthetic um, materials and objects in the space, right? And so, so I'm asking you to, to, to be present physically, bodily, materially in that space as the show is present physically, materially, bodily in the space. But it, 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 it asks you to project onto it language as it's projecting onto you language. Um, many times the objects in the space Base, um, almost all of them have a certain level of humor, um, but it's generally humor that gives way to uh, deeper constructions. Um, and so, so, so as you walk through the space, when it's a little quieter and you can hear things, or put some of those headphones on that, that we've provided for you, um, you I, th I think language is going to start projecting onto you. There's going to be ways that you, um, that you are triggered to think certain things, to interpret what that might mean um, in relationship to the visuals that, you're, um, that you are seeing, the sounds that you're hearing, um, et cetera. So um, Babbling Objects is the title of the show. Um, and so Babel in a, in a kind of pop culture sense, right, is, is a kind of nonsensical utterance, right? Uh, an utterance that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything at all, right? Uh, kind of incoherent um, utterances. Um, but the, the term Babel, babbling, comes from the old a, a, a strange Old Testament story. Um, and in this, in this myth, um, uh, and, and, and essentially it's the, it's the creation myth of, of, of languages, plural, languages, plural, right? And so there is this, this strange story we find ourselves in, in front of where the, the children of God have this idea to build, they, 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 they decided they wanted to build a tower to heaven. To, to, to God. And there was, there, was, there was hubris, I suppose, in that idea um, of, of, of rising above their station, literally, right, to, um, to ascend to, to a heavenly place. Um, God, in this case, I, supp I suppose, was feeling threatened <laughs> um, and put down their efforts by sowing discord, sowing confusion in their midst by not causing them to utter an incoherent nonsense, but rather them all speaking in different languages, different languages that they each could not understand the other's, the other's tongue, right? The other's, uh, the, 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 the sounds and the, the language that they were, they were talking about. And so they were scattered across the, across the earth. Um, and that's, that is, uh, that is the, the, the kind of creation myth of language as, as, it, as it's found in, 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 in Hebrew tradition, at least. Um, 
And that's really interesting to me, right? Because, because there, so, so, so the title comes, the cut title comes from that, both in the kind of goofy, uh, kind of uh, popular sense of just nonsensical, absurd sounds and, and objects and stuff, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a goofiness to the notion of babbling um, in, a kind of, in a popular cultural sense. Um, but in this, in this broader, deeper sense, in this ancient sense, um, we find in the, in the gallery, especially in the, in the corridor that, that our crew built um, to cause these objects to be facing one another, there's a lot of languages going on, visual languages, uh, linguistic languages, that that are at odds with each other. They're, they're speaking to each other, but maybe not locking into, into a kind of communication with each other. Um, and so, and so there, is, there is many languages, again, in this broader sense, visual, I mean, there's visual puns. There's a carrot that looks like he has a penis. There's, a, there's language there for sure, right? There's visual languages, there's auditory languages, um, and there's some, there's some written language. And I'll talk about that writing, writing in, a, in a bit as a, as a good uh, kind of example of, of how one might enter one of these pieces or not. Um, and, so, and so that was a kind of organizing principle of the, of the show, taking many, many things that are operating in their own terms, because they are discrete pieces, even though uh, we were very intentional about the installation of these things and how they might sit together, work together, and interrupt flows of, you know, I mean, that's, that's what any, any art show tends to do, is thinking about the way that, that humans will pass through this space in a way that does something, is active. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, so, oh, this is what I was going to say, is that, is that there, are, there are discrete objects that are organized as a collective, as a whole. They do make a whole, but it's a fractured whole. It's an incongruous whole. There's, 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 there, each of them are doing their own thing, but they're asserting a kind of meaning to the whole that adds up to something, maybe something, Maybe it's only confusion, but, um, but it's, a, it's an interesting confusion, hopefully. There's some sparks, hopefully, that are flying between some of the pieces. Um, and so, so as, you, as you walk through, through the space, there's three video installations that, that have a kind of a, a, a mural, mural environment, painted mural environment around them. And then this corridor of temporary walls each, has, each wall has three objects. Those three objects on each wall are facing each other, and there's a, there's a relationship. These objects are in dialogue, right? In, in, in the art world, like when I talk to my students, we talk about dialogue, objects being in dialogue with each other, right? Um, but, but these objects are <laughs> like absurdly literally in dialogue with each other. So, so there are fake rocks that have, have voices, coming out of them. I won't tell you how that's happening. It's magic. Okay, okay it's magic. I'll tell you, it's magic. Um, and, then, and then there are, there are three, three objects opposing those, those rocks. The voices that are coming out of the rocks, uh, so the, these rocks are interpreting, they're, they're, they're speaking language at the objects that are facing them. And so there's a kind of interpreting that these rocks are doing of the objects that are facing them. And, they're, and, they're, and they've, these rocks have some good ideas. They might be right. They might be. I don't know. You tell me. Um, and so, and so the, um, as, you, as you're standing there, you'll see a carrot that appears to have a sexual organ. There is a Bible that is supposed to be doing this. Can you see my hand? Doing that. The, the magic is not happening right now. The magic somehow got turned off. 
So we're gonna we're gonna we've got some people coming in to to um, to perform a, you know some incantations and try to try to get the magic happening again. And then the the third object is a is a sculptural display of a of a mathematical equation. Um, that math that that math is. Um, is not my math. Uh, it's a British, um, um, a, a British mathematician who, who took on the project of, of figuring out how, uh, if, if um, Miley Cyrus coming in like a wrecking ball was, a, was feasible at, at all. Um, and so what, what Mr. McDonough um, has determined, it's conclusive, is that Miley Cyrus just couldn't come in as a wrecking ball. The, the amount of force necessary to move her through standard construction materials, she surely would not survive. All right, so we, we solved something here tonight. I think we've got it. Got to the bottom of something at least. Um, and so that's not my math. I, I appropriated their math and put it into a space with with no with no context, right? Like you don't like other than me just telling you it and it the piece is titled Miley Cyrus. Um, there is there is no other indication of what that mathematics. Um, might mean or do. That rock has, a, has an idea using its thinking cap. Um, it's got a good head on its shoulders, that rock. Um, and, uh, and so there, there is some indication, if you're listening attentively to the rock's ideas, you might have a little more contextualizing of that piece. Um, but that math, at least to somebody like me who is not so good at math, um, is, uh, is a kind of mute language. It's a language that doesn't speak. Um, it's, it hangs, that, that math hangs on its tether, on its wires, inert and lame, a little bit like an unused wrecking ball. So, is there any, what, it, what should we talk about? Is there anything you guys want to say or ask me? Or we could just go, go back to drinking wine. Yes, ma'am. How about the piece with the fireplace? Yeah. How's that now? Okay. Um, that, is a, that, is a, that is an eternal fire. It's a fire that burns but does not consume its fuel. It just burns and burns and burns. Um, but there is a, there's a hand tossing um, music into it. Um, when I was growing up, I grew up in the Christian church and there were many youth group outings, uh, kind of like winter, winter gatherings, winter camp or whatever, where there was a bonfire for the final final evening of that outing where, where we were asked or pressured or coerced to burn our secular music, to get rid of it as a stumbling block to our more kind of purified self. But there's also like in, in Christian, um, uh, Christian scriptures, there's a, there's a, there's a use of the, of the, of the metaphor of a fire as, as one of refinement, right? And, and that, that evokes, what does that evoke? A, a kind of purifying element to, um, that, that a flame provides. Um, and so there's a, there's, there's, as with all the pieces, there's, there's many ways of kind of thinking about it. There is a kind of, kind of jokey hook to it, but it's, it's meant to be a kind of, I don't know. I mean, it's not exactly a critique of, the way that I grew up. I've had, 
fond memories of burning shit in fire. I mean, what's not to like about that? Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's meant to, meant to have a number of layers to it. So that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was fascinated on mm. staring at Yeah, it. mesmerizing, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it was kind of like that play of how things used to be versus the virtual world. Mm -hmm. you know, we're still trying to sort that all out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. And I think that's kind of a theme or a, a running motif in a way of the show. There's these objects that, you know, I think there's something really beautiful about listening to rocks, but then they're plastic. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. They're off-gassing, yeah. aren't they? They're killing us. <laughs> yes? Can you talk a little bit about your idea of space? Yeah. Because you mentioned it earlier. Yeah, when we were talking, we talked about that. It's, um, you know, the rocks are fake and the, the mural is definitely like a reproduction of nature. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Everything is suspect and right. you know, you're, you're constantly being told. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I yeah, I th I think I mean like the the sh the show is the show has a lot of fakery. Um I have a I this 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 organ I have a fake organization that I am the artist in residence of that has hacked my life and my website. And I go and I and I and I roam the countryside, talking about this organization that is maybe fake, might be real. Who knows? Who knows? Um, and so, yeah, I'm interested in it. I mean, like, fake is fake. Like the the word fake is interesting because it's um, for a thing to be fake. It must have a real thing as its analog, right? So it's it's always parasitic conceptually of the of the thing itself, right? Um, which then puts it like that. Then makes it that sets it in a a more kind of rich dynamic in the world. It gives it a kind of dynamism that is that is more significant than just a kind of throwaway culture or trash culture right like i think i think it's more complicated than just like a, a kind of laugh away fakery right that there's there's a way that we i don't know it like it gets at ideas of authenticity authentic experience authentic materials um so then synthetic is a synthesis of those things, um, kind of, right? Um, so, my, my yeah. Is, so you have the fake yeah. Clearly represented and, right. and emphasized and accentuated. And so, where and are you intending for us to be thinking when we are conversing with the object to be thinking about the real? Yep. No, no, I, I love that you're asking this question. And I wonder if other people have ideas about this. Um, but I, I, I'm gesturing to the, the possibility of the real showing up. Yeah. So like, I, I think, I think no, the idea of real, I mean, f um, philosophers have been wrestling with notions of authenticity and the real for a long time. And it's, it's a, it continues to be a really fertile, problematic because it's uh, the idea of the real, the, the thing that we can actually hang our hat on as authentic experience is um, made all the more problematic perhaps now. I mean, when if, if you know, like on Tuesday, there was a lot of, of young students in the room and they've grown up most of their life working within a space that is not real, kind of, right? I mean, it's virtual, right? So it's not real in the sense that it's not like real, but it's real in a very real sense in that it ha exerts power. It, it, it 
it prompts us to actions that we would not otherwise do, right? Like things that we encounter in, the vir in virtual space on the internet. We operate within it as if it were real, just like I oper I'm operating in this context as if you all are real. <laughs> yeah? And we can agree that, like, that there is a realness to this, right? Um, but as you, as you work toward, like, saying, all right, this is the dividing line between real and real and fake, authentic and synthetic. Those are, those are, not, those are not clear definitions. Those are not clear, clear markers and boundaries. Yes, you have something to say about this? Well, just at the risk of delaying my own criticism. Yeah. So I'm really curious because we're talking about reality versus fiction, yeah. well, authentic versus inauthentic. Yeah. Real versus fake. Yeah. And what I would say is that we talked about traditionally being fake again. Yes. I do, yes, I do indeed. And, and so as we talk about it, we move into that more spiritual world, then are we getting into a dialogue about spiritual in that context? Yeah. 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 It gets it gets it gets complicated as we as we follow any of these paths forward. You know, the, um, the fire that doesn't consume, that's directly from the burning bush, right? Yeah. That's part of that story as well. Yeah. I mean, my language is, is very steeped in the tradition that I come, come from. So it's, yeah, that's right. You had one more, I feel like you had one more thing to say. No, did, no, did no, you? no. I, was just, I was curious about whether that is part of what you're exploring as you deal with reality versus non-reality uh, as that relates to, this, to, to your tradition in the spiritual world as well. If that's part of like, what you're exploring. Yeah, uh, to, to some extent. I'm, I'm interested in, there's, there's quite a number of traditions or, or like disciplines that I draw from. Um, theology, philosophy, you know, like, um, I don't know, like radical leftist politics, um, um, psychology, other, other things, and, and, and just culture in general, histories. Um, that I, I draw from those, not, like, the way that I've been thinking about it recently is, is not so much, like the conventional way of going at that is, is that those, those are sources of content. Yeah? But I'm, I'm less interested in these, these things that I draw from and put together, right? So I draw from these various things and I juxtapose them. I, 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 I force them into a, into a space. They cohabit a space in my work. Um, and I, but I, I'm, I'm less interested in those things as sources of content and more just as, as histories, as languages, that when, when put together, that they, that they, they give off a, a charge, right? That there's, a, there's, a, there's an activity there that, that doesn't then lead to a kind of, it, it doesn't follow the, the sort of proposition and then solution, but rather one that, that is explora, exploratory, um, that, that, keeps, that keeps open wide the possibility of becoming a new thing, right? This, this idea of a, of a new thing is very important to me in all, in all my work, um, where I'm taking things from, from many different sources, um, and, and sitting, the, like taking them very seriously, putting them together in thoughtful ways and seeing what happens. And part of what happens, what's exciting about, about art exhibitions is that part of what happens is all of you happen, right? Like you walk into the space and now, like we, we, have, uh, we have an inventory list of six, seven, eight, nine, nine things in that space. And as soon as you walk into that room, there's 10 things in that space. <laughs> and that's really, like, I, I, I think that's rad. That's, that's, like, that's really exciting to me because now, there's, now there's, there's more things in the room that are in dialogue, that are speaking and moving and doing all the things that an art object does, I mean, in a sense. Yes, ma'am. I love silly questions. Don't get it 
that they do their own interpretation, but they're all excited about it. They walk out and they're saying things that you never had intended for that object to say, but they're still excited about it. So yeah. No, no, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's not a silly question, first of all, and and um, yeah, no, I'm excited about that. That's the new thing, like that is a new thing that results from from the bringing together of constituent, uh, bringing together a constituency of things is is a is the possibility of a new thing, and a new thing is whatever these things cause you to think about. I mean, there's there's things that I was thinking about that I've been talking about, but I'm, I, it, if, you, if you notice, I'm trying to, to maintain a, a light foot about it. I'm trying to not trespass too much on space that now is a public thing. Like as of 4.30 this afternoon, it's now a public exhibition. And I'm, I'm interested in maintaining a very a, a lightness of step um, within, within, a, within the exhibition because I'm, I'm interested in in thoughts that lead in many different different ways. Yeah. Yeah, Margaret. I'm curious because you know, obviously some of the things are illusionistic, like the rock. Yeah. Really looking like rock. So right. as a teacher, you know, you have a student for a short period of time. How much do you emphasize craft in terms of just like this is how you build something, and how much do you emphasize concept, philosophy? And do you mean in my classroom or? Classroom, yeah. yeah. For four years, yeah. For four years. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. really are to yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't emphasize craft all that much. I mean, I we certainly talk about it, and we build skills in my classes. Like that. That's a that's a thing. That's a that's an objective we have in my drawing one class. They have more skills when they leave, hopefully, than they did when they started. That's that's a hope, and that's a that's a craft-based skill set, right? Um, but what I'm way more interested in is um, is them is them developing uh, developing a spirit of exploration, yeah, and having what is also a set of skills uh, to then direct that exploration into interesting areas, right? So talking about a creative process. So, so I'm, I emphasize in my, even in my drawing one class, um, um, I, I instigate various situations that they have to solve problems creatively. And I kind of don't give a shit what it looks like in the end. I really don't. Like if they, if they go out on a limb and really take, like put themselves in a position where they can fail miserably, that's great. Like I'm, I'm all for that. Because I, I, the skills, I mean, I, I know people who have developed really, really incredible illusionistic uh, skills because that's where their ideas were heading, were, were heading them, and they figured it out, right? They, they, like autodidactically, like they taught themselves or they studied under somebody to do it. So like, if, if, that's, where, if that's where their ideas are leading, then, then that's what they gotta do is develop those skills. But then lots of artists, like what are their skills? Like who knows what their skills are? Like their skills are, Thinking, thinking crazy thoughts, and then going to the, to whatever length it takes to execute those thoughts in in interesting, new, strange ways. Yeah. Yes, Robbie. I have three things for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Harmonious water lilies, strange water lilies. For sure, they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Absolutely. No question about it. Harmonious water lilies. Fake water lilies. Yeah. But, but one could argue that his, water, his fake water lilies are far more important than the original water lilies, right? Than the real water lilies. The real water lilies that died many, like a long time ago, one could argue that his fake water lilies are way, way more important, way more significant, which, which isn't... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure they would. Yeah. Uh, but I, when I opened it up, I noticed there were embossed gold lettering 
Uh -huh. It says simulated genuine <laughs> <laughs> That's that's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I like it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Did you say stoned? Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. I, I was hoping you said stoned. Yeah. All right. Those are good. Those are three good ones, Robbie. Thank you for saying them. You're good. <laughs> so I just want to go back again then. Now yeah. To the space yeah. 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 Please. Um, you mean we didn't solve that already? <laughs> uh, that's for me. Yeah. Well, maybe way ahead of me. Uh, uh. Yeah. One is, so you have a mural, mm -hmm. a photographic paper version of something that I look at and go, horrid. Yeah, it, it transports you. Yeah. yeah, right. But it is real paper. Yep, or yep. Or what I call paper. Yeah. And it is colors yeah. that have been really, so it's a real thing. Yeah, and paper comes from trees. And paper comes from trees. <laughs> yeah. So it, it becomes its own real thing. Yeah. And there's also... We go on trips and we go to Yosemite, we go hiking in the local woods, and what do we do? We take out our camera, yeah. and then we create, there we are, standing in that thing that's supposedly the real thing, yeah. creating the quote-unquote fake thing, which is a real, well, it's not a real photograph anymore, it's a, it's a yes. real combination of zeros and ones that's that right. somehow make us something. Right. So, I just find that conversation fascinating, and because also you said you liked words, so I took your title mm -hmm. of Wrecking Ball and um, Wrecking Balls and Talking Heads, and because of the conversation that's happening between the rocks and the equation, to me it switches and becomes Talking Balls, Wrecking Heads. Yeah. And, you know, that yeah. Yeah. That's good. Are, yeah. You know, yeah. So I, yeah. Fine. Yeah. What do you apologize for? Oh, not having a question? Oh, no, no, no that's great. I'm Please proceed. Being here yeah. And beginning this conversation. Yeah. This stuff that's happening in my head and all the responses that come and all that exponential dialogue that you were hoping to manifest from your work might not have happened had I just been me standing shoulder to shoulder with you yeah 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 sure yeah yeah and that's that's maybe the that's a problem with the the conceit of what's going on right here is 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 it, is it like to my mind it exerts too too heavy a force on the show because um, i i'd be interested in knowing in thinking through what the possibilities were had i not been here and you're just sitting in the space and thinking about whatever whatever you were thinking about um um, on your on your own, uh, yeah. Do I? You say? Yeah. You get to find out what is happening in the spaces when you are not present. Yeah, that's really hard. I don't. I like. I have speakers planted in the gallery. Maybe I should plant <laughs> microphones. A little bit. Yeah. 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 For sure. I bet a lot of artists do, because it's, it, it winds up being really instructive. Um, and something, I'd, something I'd, I cater for my students that would be great if someone catered it for me is, um, is w we occasionally will do a critique of their work where they're not allowed to speak at all. So then we have a conversation about their work, but the artist themselves have to stay mum. Like they have to, they, they, their only role is to receive, take notes or whatever. Um, and I, I think that's like any artist knows the value of that. I mean, but it's the, it's the nice thing about like the difference between perform, like a, a performance oriented art form like music or, or theater is that the, the performer is always present and then the thing is over. But for a exhibition, it goes on for 
30 days, uh, give or take, and then it's, so, so there's, there's like way more life to the, the thing that doesn't include the artist than does include the artist, which is, which is great. That's right. You got nothing to do with it. Yeah, who gives a shit what Richard Serra meant <laughs> to say in his work? Like, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, it's far outside of his, his own ability to, to manage the conversation, to insert his, his intentionality onto, onto the conversation. Who cares what he thinks? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, it, it mattered because it's like, it's what got him pouring some steel or whatever, but it's, it's like, it doesn't, it, yeah, exactly. It, it certainly doesn't necessarily mean what you meant. Yeah, that's right. Nor, nor need it. I mean, which is a strange idea, but it's, I mean, as a mode of communication, which art making is, it's like, I guess I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it is a mode of communication in a sense, but it's one that in the best case scenario is that it's, a mode of communications, like many, many, many overlapping conversations that happen all at the same time. We can only hope. We can only hope. That's right. Yes, sir, in the back. Just, yeah, you kind of danced around a little bit, but do you, um, I know you don't like to insert your quote authority on the art pieces to let us interpret what we're seeing. Yeah. But in the sense of you wandering about as an anonymous person there. Yeah. Yeah. Does that have any on that? Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure I was as you were saying that I'm trying to think of examples if there are any examples of work that has resulted from from like overheard conversations or whatever. And I'm not I'm not sure. I mean like I I definitely have friends you know talk you know talk to me about their work, my work and what what they see happening, etc. or like Nicole writing that essay for the for the catalog, it's really helpful to to think through with her what she sees going on in the work, right? Like that's so that's a that's a dialogue that is is helpful. Does it change my like what I then do the next day in the studio? I'm trying to think if there's examples of it changing it. It it may so so to say. That, like, I don't know if I have examples of it. And therefore, that might mean <laughs> that, 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 um, that what you think is going on in the work is, is not that important to me. Um, but that's not the case. Like, it's important to me that you're formulating ideas about my work. I don't necessarily need to know those ideas because I have ideas about what's going on in my work, right? Like, so I, like I want my work to be as good as possible, and so I get feedback on my work, and, I, and, and it's, a different, it's a different situation when like, my buddy John comes over to my, like, my space and we talk about a project that, I, that I'm working on, and I tell him what I'm thinking about, and he gives me feedback on what that, what that might be. Um, uh, that's a, that's, there's, a, there's a different, like, I want a different outcome out of that experience than this because like I'm trying to I'm trying to make the best products I'm I can right and so like that's in in the pre exhibition phase of an artwork right it's really important what I what I'm trying to say in this work it's very very important because otherwise like if you're not rooted in specifics in your project it just becomes nothing. Like it just becomes fluffy, lo too loose. Um, so it's really important for me to be really, really locked into my objectives and my interests and intentions. Right, and I think that's what, I, I mean, I'm not saying that that's not the case, but just if you're heading down it, I mean, at least the way that I think I'm heading down a certain way, just let me interject some right here, a conversation you're discussing, whatever, and you go, oh, yeah. mm.
Yep. So that right there has happened many, many times <coughs> th th forever. I mean, for as long as I've been making stuff. Yeah, for sure. So very, very, like, I've been influenced hugely and f have always find it really helpful to hear people kind of talk about my work and, and yeah, like it's, it's kind of honed the way that I, that I, that I make work. Um, Yeah, for sure. Not at okay. Any last things to talk about? Are you a teacher? I am. Where, where you teach? At Azusa Pacific University in um, in LA County. Yes. I am. <laughs> These guys are at my thing on Tuesday night. Backlash? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. They, they're not paying attention. <laughs> the people who matter, like, they're not paying attention to what I'm doing. So, no, not really. Yeah. Well, we'll be hanging out for another hour. Oh, there's another question. Yeah. Uh, you like to try to make the best work that you can. Yes. What, what to you is your best work? Like, what do you think is the best work that you're doing when you're doing your best work? Like, no, no, that's a good question. Yeah, because there, there has to be a, yeah, there has to be some amount of criteria, right? Like, as a, as a means of externally analyzing your projects. Um, yeah, that's a good question. It kind of changes depending on the project, I think. Like, um, the, yeah, so that's hard to say, actually. Like, the reaction is really important. I mean, so it's like how people, the kinds of conversations that people are talking about, if it's like roughly what I'm thinking about. But, but like we, we, you guys came in a little bit late, but what we were talking about through a lot of this is is the, the way that, like for, for a room full of objects like is in the gallery right now, that have, uh, that, are, that are kind of packed with meaning, um, for those to instigate really different reads than I intended, that I was ever thinking about, is something that I really get, a, I get jazzed by. Um, and so, so that, that doesn't point, again, like we were talking about this a little bit already, that doesn't exactly point to a, to a weakness or a failure of the piece for it to kind of roll into another set of interpretations than I meant. I'm, I'm interested in people engaging in the work and, and in that engagement, then they think whatever they, they want to think about, right? So it's like, like I'm interested in setting up a scenario and that's either object-based or what you guys saw on Tuesday night of that more kind of performance-y thing with visuals. Um, I, I'm interested in providing a, a thing that brings you out, brings you together, and then you engage with it in some way. And we had such a nice conversation afterwards that that's like, that, that registers as a success to me is that like, that there's a, there's a thing that results. And that thing is like, we're connecting, we're talking about it. Like the dude who asked like, why? Like, yeah. why? <laughs> <laughs> and the why, I, th I mean, I've, we've, I've thought a little bit about that since, since he asked the question of what, what a good question that is, just in general. Like, like what, like why? <laughs> <laughs> because that can be asserted to so many of our activities in the world. And if the why is a thing that brings people together and sorts them out, like Dave Hickey said, I, I, was, I referenced this, this guy Dave Hickey at the beginning of my talk. If that's the, if that's the why, like, or if that's the result, then, then that why question is answered easily. Because it's that, that's the thing, is like bringing, bringing people together. Provide, putting, putting a thing in front of them that they're engaged with, but like either confuses them or confounds them or offends them 
or whatever, like all of that's really interesting. It's just like gets people out of bed. There's not a lot of reasons to get out of bed these days. Yeah, I yeah, probably that's true. Yeah. Make what? Oh yeah. I don't know how to. I probably would if I could. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming. That was great.